If you're only a few centimetres tall, you'll want to pray that you never meet one of these fierce creatures. This is a praying mantis, and it preys on insects that get too close, including other praying mantises. Finding this one in the park today made me think of some useful expressions that I'd like to share with you. They call these insects praying mantises because of the prayer-like posture they adopt while waiting for a meal to pass by. Its scientific name is Mantis religiosa. It can be easily identified from the black ring spot on the inside of its forelegs. That's forelegs, not forelegs. As you know, all insects have six legs. Four means front, as in forehead, forearm, forefront, and foreleg. Quadrupeds, like horses, have four legs. The two at the front are the forelegs. The two back legs are the hind legs. Another homophone you might have noticed is prey and prey. To pray is to make an appeal for help to a higher authority. The higher authority might be your god, a religious object, or a saint. Pray that you never find yourself unemployed like so many others in these difficult times. To pray is also to entreat or ask for something in a very formal way. You might be at a wedding and hear the Master of Ceremonies announce, Pray silence for the father of the bride. What this means is, Shut up and listen to the poor sod who paid for this expensive do. Prey, on the other hand, is an animal hunted for food. Prey can also refer to people who are the victim of some hostile action. He fell prey to the muggers and they stole his camera and wallet. Online scammers prey on people's gullibility. When we pray, we say a prayer. Notice that the vowel in pray changes in the word prayer. Pray, prayer. Praying for a miracle, the priest sank to his knees in prayer. He recited the same prayer he'd used to pray to God many times before. The forelegs of the praying mantis are spiked and are designed to grasp their prey securely. Mantises have huge eyes composed of up to 10,000 omatidia. If you want to know what omatidia are, Check out my video English lesson, Compound Eyes. The mantis's visual range is about 20 metres. They have excellent stereoscopic vision at close range. Because they hunt by sight, they hunt during the day when there's light to see by. They stay perfectly still, their body shape mimicking a stick. They ambush any unwary insect that comes within about 10 centimetres. They strike at their prey in five hundredth of a second and grasp the prey in their spiked forelegs. The males fly at night in search of the less mobile females. They detect the pheromones that the females produce. Pheromones are chemicals that animals release when they're ready to mate. Amorous mantises can detect pheromones over thousands of metres away. We have an expression, what's eating him? What's eating you? What's eating her? What's eating you means, what's making you angry or upset? 
Ask it of a male mantis and the answer will probably be the female. Mantises are cannibalistic and the female often eats the male. He'd better pray that whichever female he mates with has recently eaten and isn't hungry. That way he might not lose his head. The head is what the female bites off first during their lovemaking. Some lovemaking. The expression, to lose your head, in English, isn't quite as literal, thankfully. To lose your head means to suddenly lose control of your emotions. When you lose your head, you become very upset or overly emotional over something or someone. I was so angry that I lost my head completely. When John found out Sally was leaving him, he really lost his head. Whether the female eats her mate or not, after mating she lays her eggs. She lays hundreds of eggs in a frothy mass that quickly hardens into a protective case called an oetheca. If he keeps his head, a mantis can expect to live for up to a year. The expression, to keep your head, is the opposite of to lose your head. It means to stay calm, even when things are very difficult and challenging. By keeping his head, even when they were down to just one engine, the pilot managed to get back to the airport on a wing and a prayer. On a wing and a prayer means to be just able to do a job, despite being in a very poor condition or poorly prepared. It originated in World War II, when aircraft that were badly damaged were nevertheless able to make it home. We've no funding and a staff of two, but we managed to operate on a wing and a prayer. Sometimes, however, we're very unlikely to succeed. Then we say that we don't have a prayer. She doesn't have a prayer of passing that exam. She hasn't even read the book. And my final expression is the answer to your prayers. When something is the answer to our prayers, it's exactly what is wanted or needed. When my old computer finally gave up the ghost, right in the middle of an important assignment, I nearly lost my head. I had no money and it was eating me how I could get a replacement and continue my work. Then I discovered I'd won a new laptop in an online competition I'd entered months before. I didn't think I had a prayer of winning, but I did, and it was the answer to my prayers. Pray share this video with your friends online. If it's eating you that you're not making as fast progress in English as you'd like to, you might need the services of a teacher. Visit Lingua Spectrum Plus and find out how I, or the other teachers, can help you achieve the level of English that you want. You might find that online classes with a real teacher may well be the answer to your prayers. Even if you don't decide to take one-to-one -one classes, you should still do the interactivity that goes with this lesson. My interactivities are almost as good as having a class with me sitting by your side. In the interactivity, I'll help you to master this lesson's new language. Some websites prey on your desire to learn English and charge lots of money for empty promises. All I promise is that at Lingua Spectrum, I share my love of English with you for free and pray that you'll benefit from my small efforts. I'll have a new video English lesson for you shortly.